Okay, so the infamous 191. We got to talk about 191. That's the, that's the thing I was I was referring yes. to earlier. I sort of thought so. I wasn't going to let you get away <laughs> right, with it. Right, right. I, I didn't want to steal it. Okay. So, um, you know, so Lee makes the decision. I'm not worried about McClellan. He's slow. He says, not a problem. I am going to divide my army up. I'm going to send Stonewall Jackson with two-thirds of my army. They're going to uh, get to Harper's Ferry, and they're going to... St- so he comes up with the orders on the 9th of September. They're going to start moving on the 10th. Talk about being an optimist. That's <laughs> Lee was always the optimist. <laughs> Harper's Ferry will fall by the 12th. They'll come back together. The army will be reconstituted. Boom, we go up Hagerstown Pike, and we're, we're going to go into Pennsylvania. Um... That was his thinking, and so on the 9th, he comes up with these orders, Special Orders 191, that will divide the army up, and he's going to send copies to various commanders, and, uh, you know, on the 10th, they're going to start moving, and, the you know, there's there's a lot of controversy of 191, and quite frankly, I don't get into all of the, yeah. the ins and outs, but, you know, who was it? Who was the whole culprit? Who cares? Right at least for me. But apparently what may have happened was D.H. Hill had a division Mm -hmm. that was attached to Stonewall Jackson's wing. And they were cousins or? They were, he was their brother-in-laws. Brother-in-laws. I knew they were, there was some connection there. Yeah, brother-in-laws. And so supposedly Jackson didn't know that D.H. Hill was getting his own set of orders. So he was, he had a, a set transcribed. So two sets of orders are going to DHL, and they think that one of those. How do you? How does a courier drop a copy of these seminal orders? I don't know. Yeah. The, the, you know, when did the we'll never know. But there they were, wrapped around three cigars, and um, when the Union Army gets to Frederick, starting on the twelfth, on the thirteenth, these Indiana boys are in this field outside of of uh, Frederick. And they see these cigars. They don't care about the, the, the paper wrapped around it. They're lucky that yeah. the, the paper even was read at all. You know, yes. I, I'm thinking I'd about throw like. Throw it up and throw it away. I know. I'm thinking about guys like that we were in with. If they were to come across a pack of cigarettes, you know, American <laughs> cigarettes in an Afghani field, they wouldn't care what was wrapped around right, it. Right. You're right. It would get crumbled up and yep, tossed. They would it. just go for the cigarettes. But so that's what happened. And um, these Indian. Now. Fortunately, I think it was a sergeant, Sergeant Blouse or Blunt. I can't remember his name, but um, he realized the importance of the orders. And so he's going to send it up through the chain of command. And eventually he's going to get to McClellan. And a lot of people will say McClellan, you know, he was slow. No, McClellan, apparently he found the order. He received the orders. They think maybe between one and two o'clock in the afternoon he receives them. And I always think back to uh, the movie A Bridge Too Far. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if you remember the scene where uh, a glider has crashed, and in that glider is all of the Allied plans and all of the maps. And and so um, one of the officers is bringing them to the general field, off- the general field marshal, and he says, we have the plans of the Allies. And he says, that's all bogus. He says, that was just planted. I'm not even going to look at those. And McClellan really had to figure out a lot of things. Number one, were they valid? You know, the, was it a ploy? Or, yeah, is it, is it a decoy of some kind? That's number one. Number two, they were in, you know, it says the 9th of September. It's the 13th. They could have changed They could then. have changed. It talks about McClaws, and it talks about D.H. Hill, but it doesn't give numbers. You know, it talks about where they're going. But he knew the most important thing was he knew emphatically and definitively Harper's Ferry was in trouble. Um, Whereas he may have suspected it, now he knew it. Mm -hmm. And he knew he had to move quickly. And the knock he gets from people that I consider to be maybe they don't know the whole story, I won't call them uninformed, is that it takes time to validate. It takes time to start planning. And then and, to then to get your army actually well, that's the thing. in like in marching in, order in, and in moving. Movement. 
that even with a modern military that that is that's yes. an all day event right that's an all day event even with a even with now that's an so, all day event so so he so they're going to start moving on the 14th you can't blame him you know that okay quick get your rifles and let's start moving. that's not going to work Mm-mm. so they're moving on the four, morning of the 14th which i think is appropriate you mm-hmm. know i don't think he delayed i don't think he was slow uh i think lee was shocked that he's moving so fast and they are going to try to uh, defeat Lee's army in detail, number one. And number two, to save Harper's Ferry. And the way he's going to do it, if I should continue. Oh, yeah. So he's, he's going to do, he's going to have with these different prongs. The most important is going to be the movement along the National Road uh, over Turner's Gap. First, he has to go through the Catoctin Mountains. Then he has to go over South Mountain, and he's going to divide his army where the Ninth Corps is going to, Burnside's Ninth Corps, is going to lead the, um, the march, followed by the Union First Corps, and they're going to be heading over toward Turner's Gap. But he knows that he has to, he has to save Harper's Ferry, and the way he's going to do it is he takes the Sixth Corps under his buddy William Franklin, and he sends it to the south toward Crampton's Gap, which is closer to Harper's Ferry. And they're moving they're moving pretty fast. And so what happens then is an epic and, and most people don't realize they think, oh, there's only one big engagement during the Maryland campaign, and that mm-hmm. was and no. I you know, I love talking about the the Battle of South Mountain the battles of South Mountain. Because uh, the battlefields, for the most part, are pristine. You can go over there and you can see what those, you know, stone walls at Gettysburg. Again, I'm not denigrating Gettysburg, but there's been so many people knocking over those stone walls and they're having to be rebuilt. The stone walls at, at, at South Mountain are the same stone walls that have not been rebuilt because there's amazing? nobody climbing on them. Isn't that amazing? It That's is cool. amazing. That's amazing, man. It is truly and so, uh, and so, you're going to have a number of engagements on the uh, on the 14th. One is going to be at Frosttown Gap and Frosttown Plateau. A second is going to be at Turner's Gap, and a third is going to be at Crampton's Gap. And in all cases, it is the Union Army trying to get over South Mountain to get to the other side to beat Lee's army. Number one, and to uh, defend, help defend Harper's Ferry and save it. 